be authentic, be yourself. Don't go on social media trying to be somebody else because they're taken already, you know? So the thing is to be yourself and to not think that people want you to be perfect because what really is selling is being yourself that people say, wow, that person's human, that person tripped, that person stumbles when they speak, or that person is funny and quirky. Um, what, what doesn't sell is this fake thing of the Instagram perfection. So be yourself and don't be afraid to be yourself. Come out as yourself. That's my first big uh, tip is don't try to be somebody else because it's never going to work. I'm Janet Ahmed, host of Hacks and Hobbies podcast and a digital presence advisor at HumbleZone. This episode is brought to you by Home Studio Mastery. I launched a consultation and course program to help podcasters and course creators to create a space in their homes that will reduce the friction of creating content and appearing their best when showing up on camera. The pandemic gave us a lot of issues, but this one is here to stay. We're now so much closer to our audience thanks to video becoming more popular and affordable. I help guide folks who want to create Hollywood worthy studios to not only capture great content, but also build more confidence, more authority, and be more comfortable in front of the camera. If I can do it, you can too. And with my help, you can do it faster. So if you'd like to learn more, visit homestudiomastery.com and how you too can create a home studio that brings out your personality, professionalism, and possibilities. Thank you for tuning in to Hacks and Hobbies with your host, Junaid. We're visited by our amazing guests coming from all walks of life. We want to learn their story, their struggles, and their journey on how they got to where they are today. So stick around. In this episode of Hacks and Hobbies, we sit down with John Omlor, the esteemed queen of authentic marketing. Join us as John takes us on a journey through her incredible life story from facing adversity and financial struggles to finding success as an online coach. Discover the defining moments that led her to shift from offline marketing to cracking the code of organic marketing. Learn the strategies and principles behind her remarkable achievement of reaching 2 million in just 17 months, all without running ads. Gain insights into the power of authenticity and the importance of meaningful connections in building a thriving coaching business. Tune in now for an inspiring conversation filled with wisdom and practical tips with John. John, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. And you are so welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. Awesome. So, John, you are known as the queen of authentic marketing. That is a really powerful title. And you've worked with a lot of uh, amazing coaches and consultants, but I'm sure there's a story before all of this started. So let's go back and peel and rediscover the origin story of where Jean started. Okay. So how far back do you want to go? We'll go, we'll go pretty far back. Um, go, started... we, we have to go only go as far back as where you found the defining moment of your life that enabled you to say, okay, this is what I want to do. Okay. And there were a couple defining moments. I'll, I'll tell you the one that really mattered. Okay. Of course. I had already been coaching for a while and I had been through some hard times and I had gotten into deep debt and I had two mm -hmm. kids and I still do. <laughs> and <laughs> at that point, that was like three and a half years ago. And I was 54 then. And I was already had been coaching for years, mm -hmm. but I'd gotten to a point where the offline marketing was just not working in the city that I lived in. I lived in Ohio in Cincinnati. Mm. It wasn't, it just wasn't, they're not like hot buyers. I would not say they're hot buyers. They're generally for coaching. Yes, sure. of course they buy coaching, but it wasn't like New York. One day I, I was sitting there and I thought, okay, I really need to do something. And I'm 54 and this isn't working anymore offline. Mm. And I really got to get online because I know I'm going to be one of those highly successful online coaches. Hmm. And I said to myself, if not now, when? And when I asked myself that question, I thought, wait, when? If not now, when? Yeah. So that's something I always ask myself now is not, if not now, when? So I got online, I plonked down 10K in, on three different credit cards to 
a program that wasn't the best program, but I, I, I learned what organic marketing was. And I didn't know mm -hmm. what that was even. I thought, oh, I can do this. I could do this really well. I could be the best at this. Mm -hmm. So started learning and, and cracked the code on that. And then people saw what I was doing and they saw it was authentic and that they weren't having to run ads and not against ads, by the way, but you can't start with ads. You can't just go out and, and spend a bunch of money on ads and, and hope it's throwing mud at walls and they don't work exactly the way they used to. Let's face that. Yeah. So I thought, okay, I can't risk that because that's just like throwing mud at walls. And I just cracked the code and people saw what was happening. And, and I got to a million dollars in 17 months without ads. And that was, and then I got to 2 million after three years. And that was this mm -hmm. August and I'm over 2 million. And it's just been a bit of a wild ride, but the rest is history as they say. <laughs> so when you did start coaching, you said you were an offline coach. What inspired you to be a coach and not like some someone else? I was newly separated with two young children and a one-year-old and a four-year-old in New York City. And I thought, okay, what can I do? Mm. I, I can't, I'm not going to go get some job and have somebody look after my children. And, right. and that doesn't even work in New York because you're paying more for the nanny than, you know, <laughs> and you're not yeah, seeing exactly. children. So, and I hadn't worked in a lot and I thought, well, that's, I'm not doing that. So what do mm. I do? And I started thinking, what can I do? And I started going through, I just went through considerations. I thought, and I thought coaching, that's the obvious choice because I can do that from home. Mm. So I got certified at night in my pajamas. And I, the kids would, I'd be taking care of the kids from seven in the morning till seven at night. I put them mm -hmm. to bed and I'd work from seven till midnight every night for two years to start my coaching business. Yeah. I would take the weekend off and I never watched any media and I just head down because I realized I needed at least 25 hours a week to build my business. That's yeah. five hours times five nights. So that's what I did. And then, then I started getting a little bit of babysitting and yeah, it was a real jigsaw puzzle to figure mm -hmm. out. And I, I love the grit and the tenacity you had to really put in the time and energy into creating this because it like literally your life depended on it. it my Our lives depended on it. It yes. wasn't mine. It was me and my children. Yes. So but then I did that the first time. And then when we had to move again, it was like I went through it twice. Mm. So you think you're like over the hump and yeah. And then it's, oh, but that's life, isn't it? Life yes. is full of vicissitudes. It's not, yes, it's going to go. And I think human beings forget that it's going to be up and down because when we're up, oh, it's up. And it's almost like we have this, we forget because maybe yeah. that God maybe did that to us for us to have hope, to not always be thinking it's going to go down again. And then I thought, here I am again, <laughs> the next level then. But by then I'd had a lot of coaching experience mm. going online was not what would have happened if, if I just started my coaching business because I had all of those years of coaching you know, companies and I'm an executive uh, certified executive leadership coach. So all of the history did help me like having history and experience. That's something that, that there's no price tag on that. I think. Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. And, and having that, the stacked learned experience that you can then refer back to, look, I was already doing this and I know how to do this. I've been, mm -hmm. I can teach you or I can coach you and, and, build that up so think you're absolutely right there's no price tag you can put on learned experience and sometimes yeah. as coaches ourselves we teach others to just go and start and do mm -hmm. and that is the only way to get to that next level to get to that next point and when you mentioned when you're high and when you're doing really good it's almost like we have amnesia where we forget where we came from well right it's not it's also i mean, i never forget where i came from sure sure but we think that things are good for now and they're going to be good forever. That's what I meant. Yeah. And, and I, I think we, we have to, because, well, except there are some people that are always like, it's good, but it's going to get bad again. That's just a negative personality. <laughs> yes, but most people is. aren't like that. Most people are like, I made it. It's just going to keep going up and up. And life goes up and down. We know that. Like a lot of these very successful people lost all of their money several mm -hmm. times over and had to restart. So yeah. again, nobody wants that to happen to them, but I'm like, I hope that doesn't happen to me because now I'm 57. Mm -hmm. I'm just grateful that it all worked eventually. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and putting in the time and the energy enabled you to do that, enabled you to get to that cracking the codes and being laser focused and mm -hmm. having those strategies in place because of that learned experience, I think is very important that a lot of people don't 
pay attention to. They don't pay attention to what it all takes for any success to happen. They say all overnight successes take a good amount of five to 10 to 15 years to, right. to happen. There's no overnight success. It's just they haven't seen you till then. So they're like, where did this exactly. person come from? Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. So I got the story, the gist of the origin story. And I also see the motivation and inspiration. The motivation was like, we need to put food on the table for all the, for the kids and myself and continue to live a life that we, we you've built for yourself. Mm -hmm. What were some of the inspirations that you continue to get as you're building your business, as you're coaching your clients? There's an important consideration, and that is... Um, when you have no money is your focus. When you're in debt and you're putting food on the table, the focus is making money. That's human, okay? Yeah. But once you get past the first million, you have to have something deeper and more meaningful to continue because it can't. you won't be motivated. You can't just yeah. be motivated. Just, so that is when I thought, wow, I made it to a million and I'm not a multi-billionaire or anything. Mm -hmm. But that's when you start to say, okay, now I'm not in that danger zone anymore. So now what do I do? Now you start thinking about, it's, it's the high, it's Maslow's, right? Mm -hmm. Hierarchy. Now you start thinking, how can I help more people? Now, I was always helping people. Yeah. It's always part of my thing. And that's why people hire me. But part of it was survival. Once you mm -hmm. get to that point, then it's okay. We're good now. I'm good now. We're all good. Now what's going to make that more meaningful? And that is where people then, and the three stages of business, the third is creating impact. I don't know if you know that. There's, there's like starting off in survival and then there's like getting sustainable and, and I'm ad living. But the third level is that you're past that. You can now actually feel like you're like at the, you're at the top of the mountain and you're in the clouds and you can look down and say, okay, I'm above that now. Mm -hmm. Now I can start really thinking about impact. And that's where I am now is of course, I'm still making money, but mm -hmm. now it's like, how can I help more people? What does that look like now? that now becomes more of a focus. Um, the fact is when you're poor or when you're not, when you're broke, when you, mm -hmm. you can't be blamed for focusing on survival and making sure your kids are okay. Yeah. And there's, I think there's a little mistake going on around that people that have no money are being shamed for not being impact driven, but that's just not human nature. That's not, yeah. It's not human nature that if you're not eating and you're all, you have to come out of the gate being so in, of course they want it they want to help people because you wouldn't want to be a coach but there's this shame that you should only really want to help people and money should be secondary oh, man. no i'm sorry you no. need to make money for your kids money should be first while you're helping people and 100%. i think that, that those people are modeling that mindset after people that are already multimillionaires. it's a luxury to not care about the money coming in yeah yeah it's that it's almost like they forget what it takes to go from A to B to C. Some right. people are stuck in the A to B. Like, how do I get from A to B? Like, I'm zero now. How do I get to B? And then some people are thinking about, okay, how do I get from B to C? And they forget what it took for them to get from A to B. And that's mm -hmm. what people are looking for. They're like, hey, I want more information. How do you even get a podcast started? How do you even start a business that helps others or a coaching business? People mm -hmm. are looking for that information all the time, but we are focusing, like our focus changes. So now we're going to press upon others of what they should be focusing on. Mm. So the f number one thing that people are focusing on is survival. We need money to survive, to put food on the table, to feed our mm -hmm. kids, to have mm -hmm. a roof on, on, a, uh, on a, over our heads. What's the number two that you mentioned or what are you at? Well, that's, when you, that's when you're, you're out of the survival mode. That's, that's when right. you're doing better and you're sustaining, right? Sustaining. So that's okay. We're not a state of, it's not the fight or flight. It's not that obsession and the anxiety of, of bills. Then you're at the point, okay, bills are paid. We're okay. Let's sustain. But you're still yeah. not at the top of the mountain looking down, top of the peak of that mountain, looking down over the clouds and going, ah, oh, I, I yeah. got over that hump. And now oh, now I'm at the top of the, literally the top of the triangle, Maslow's hierarchy. Now we're so good. Now we can just concentrate on philanthropy. And it's hard to concentrate on helping other people when you haven't mm -hmm. helped yourself further. It's like in the airplane, they always say, give the mask 
to yourself first, right? The oxygen mask. 100%. And you help other people. Yeah, so it's basically sustaining and then it's probably a mix. And then when you get to a point where you're good, then you start thinking about where do I give money? How do I help more people? That's how things go. Oh, I love that. I love that so much. All right, let's see. I'm trying to think. So we have a break coming up pretty soon, but before we do get into the break, as you're helping and the, the, the proving strategies for marketing mindset and heart-based sales, mm -hmm. as you are focusing on sales and fo focusing on bringing the money, what helps you to create even more sales online? Marketing or systems. So you lead generation. So what I teach is lead generation mm -hmm. and everything involved. I work with high ticket client uh, coaches. Sure. And so my thing is helping people that have never coached before, or who are already ready coaches mm -hmm. to um, scale their businesses. So what you're doing is you're creating a steady stream of leads. So you're creating systems so yeah. that people can book calls and get on a call and you offer and they become your client. So it's really about replication mm. and maybe another platform or another marketing avenue. And you would add one and then you make sure you're good at that. And then you integrate and then you would add another. All right. We're going to take a quick break. And then when we get back, you'll share three hacks to take away. Okay. For superpreneurs listening. Great. I'm Janet Ahmed, host of Hacks and Hobbies podcast and a digital presence advisor at HumbleZone. This episode is brought to you by Home Studio Mastery. I launched a consultation and course program to help podcasters and course creators to create a space in their homes that will reduce the friction of creating content and appearing their best when showing up on camera. The pandemic gave us a lot of issues, but this one is here to stay. We're now so much closer to our audience thanks to video becoming more popular and affordable. I help guide folks who want to create Hollywood-worthy studios to not only capture great content, but also build more confidence, more authority, and be more comfortable in front of the camera. If I can do it, you can too. And with my help, you can do it faster. So if you'd like to learn more, visit homestudiomastery.com and how you too can create a home studio that brings out your personality, professionalism, and possibilities. Welcome back, guys. We've been talking with John Amler. She's an amazing business success. What's that? Business success coach. She's been doing this for a very long time. She's been online for the past few years, and she's made multiple seven figures. She's got amazing tips for us. Go Great. Ahead. Want to hear them? Okay. So the first tip is be authentic. Be yourself. Don't go on social media trying to be somebody else because they're taken already. So <laughs> the thing is to be yourself and to not think that people want you to be perfect because what really is selling is being yourself that people say, wow, that person's human. That person tripped. That person stumbles when they speak or that person is funny and quirky. What doesn't sell is this fake thing of the Instagram perfection. So mm -hmm. be yourself. And don't be afraid to be yourself. Come out as yourself. That's my first big tip is don't try to be somebody else because it's never going to work. I love it. So being yourself sells and you are worthy and ready right now. Okay. So number two is you got to be persistent and consistent in everything you do. You don't do something once and say, okay, I did it once. How did I do? How am I doing? You do something over and over again to see how it's working. Because business is testing. In the end, business is just testing. It's not home runs. Sometimes mm. you'll be lucky because luck does come into business every now and then. Not much luck has actually come into my business. I would say I'm not like that lucky person. Mine has been really testing and doing the really putting the numbers in. And I was thinking the other night, I thought, that's funny. Some luck is supposed to come into business. And I guess maybe <laughs> I had some. Mm -hmm. maybe by people I met or, but I never had this really lucky thing. And that made me think that we need to choose ourselves. 
Because if I waited around for opportunities, I would not be where I am. If I waited around for people to say yes to me, I would not be where I am. So it's really important to persist and to be consistent and not wait for the home run or people to give you things or give you opportunities or have luck or mm. choose you. That's the big second one. The third one, that's a bunch of tips all at once. That was a bundle of tips. <laughs> the third one, <coughs> excuse me, is to do one thing at a time. You can't do 20,000 things at once. Human beings cannot even do that. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. So you do one thing at a time. If you're going to have one product, launch one product. If you're going to do one coaching program or one offer, do one offer. If you're going to start, have one marketing avenue, don't try to do five marketing avenues with you know Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, TikTok, everything, you name it, ads all at once. Mm -hmm. So what you really want to do is do one thing and learn how to do that. Become a master at one thing. Then you're like, okay, I'm really good at this. Now I'm going to add the next element. Then you rinse and repeat. You're Now you're good at two things. Then you add the other one. And maybe at that point, you might add another product. But mm. the, the way to success is to do one thing, do it well, and add another. Do the one thing, do it well, and then add another. I think that's, that's a really powerful one. And as you're being yourself, being consistent, and persistent and do the one thing. I think that's how we learn how to drive cars, right? We just do the one thing, can just focus on the road. Now we can add on some music. Now you can add on some other things and blah, blah, blah. Thank Absolutely. You. You're When you're learning to drive, you're, you're, they're saying, okay, I, I learned to drive with a stick shift, by the way. Yeah, so same really here. Enough, but let's say not. They, they say, hey, okay, you're going to stick the, the key in, turn it, put your gas your foot on the gas and back they're going to say okay put the key in turn great now it's on now you're going to we're going to reverse you put it in reverse one thing you're right you don't do it all at once and then after a while you're doing it all at once but you're still not you just yeah. learned to integrate all those things that was a good example actually learning to integrate all those things that working is working together to drive a car yeah i love it all right now we've got the rapid fire questions thank you for the three hacks john Appreciate so those. Welcome. All right. Now, in our rapid fire question, number one, what is the one hobby that you wish you got into? Writing songs, songwriting. Ooh. Oh, I love songs. So, have you thought of any song over, or was it all, always, I wish I knew how to do it? I used to sing, but Ooh. I remember thinking, I, used, I, I remember thinking that would be really great if I could actually write my own songs but mm. i never did yeah i love it i used to sing as well in a band mm. and it was a lot of fun and then my brother took it over so now i just sing in the shower okay right. <laughs> singing in the shower yeah. <laughs> all right next up what did you want to be when you were a child an actress Ooh, and and actually, i actually became an actress so that happened that happened you made it happen nice and you're also a filmmaker I was a filmmaker. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I love it. All right. Next up, what is your favorite movie or TV show? That's a hard one. Okay. But the one that I really liked when I first started coaching that I would only watch one episode a week was Mad Men. Mm. It's an older one. Yeah. It's an older one. I, I try to get into it. Um, I could not get into it, but I think <laughs> you, you have to have a different mindset when you have it, to be in a different it journey being, when it was being filmed it was more exciting because it was current mm -hmm. right so true, true, true. okay love it next up what movie would you choose if you got to play a character in it what movie would i choose gone with the wind oh nice that's a really good one yeah awesome next up who is your favorite superhero wonder woman of course course no Actually, doubt one of my nickname some of my clients call me wonder woman oh yeah i love it thank you so much all right last question and this one's a doozy if you were a board game what would it be monopoly <laughs> <laughs> and you must play a lot of monopoly we don't play enough but i like the way that monopoly teaches children and teaches people about real estate acquisition mm. There's another game that I've been that I've, that I've introduced to my kids and it's called Cash Flow. Cash Flow. Yes, my daughter loves that one. Okay, so you guys already have it. Awesome. Yeah. I love it. Jean, thank you so much for this 
time with us and on the podcast. We learned, I learned a ton, absolutely ton, especially the impact part about how, how people, they want to be impactful from the get-go. No, you have to get to it. You can't just turn it on. It's not that everybody doesn't want to help each other. No, they can still message. be impactful okay. but, and because you want to help people, but they shouldn't be shamed into caring no. about making money at the same time is what I meant. Okay. Yeah, I absolutely. Like yeah. So not to be shamed. Don't shame people who are asking. Who, who are wanting to have a business and the business is who, about Exactly. Money. Yes. So where's the shame? Yes. Yes. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much, John. Where can my superpreneurs find you? I'm all over the internet. You can find me on Instagram, Jean Amelor. It's all simple. I'm on LinkedIn, Jean Amelor. I'm on Facebook, Jean Amelor. And my site is jeanamelor.com. So I love it. They have the spelling of my name. You can't go wrong. No, this is beautiful. All right. We'll have, we'll be sure to include the links to the podcast show notes so people can get to you and ask you questions about being the queen of authentic marketing. Thank okay. you so much again. Thank you so much, Junaid. Is it Junaid? Junaid like lemonade. That's right. There you go, Junaid. Nice to meet you and thank you so much for having me here. You're welcome. And we'll see you in the next episode. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode on Hacks and Hobbies. We absolutely appreciate your contribution. You can find additional notes on hacksandhobbies.com. Please share the podcast with your friends and tell them what you learned about our guest today. 